The last I left you guys, we took this bike we found in the trash and we cleaned it up and brought it to a rideable condition. Now all we have to do is start building. At the end of the last episode, I kind of gave you guys an overview of where my mind was headed in terms of turning this regular bike into a cargo bike. So what makes a cargo bike different from a regular bike? It's pretty much just a way to attach either storage or bins or some sort of cargo bays to the bike. Now, as you saw, I already have the bins, the cargo bins in mind, so I need some way to attach those to the frame. I suppose I could haphazardly kind of directly attach them but they're not gonna hold a lot of stuff and they're gonna easily fall off of the bike frame. I'm basically building a subframe in which the cargo bins will attach to that which then the subframe will attach to the bicycle frame. Now this project was supposed to be very quick and dirty and just using pieces of scrap metal that I had from other projects laying around and I was trying to do this as cheaply and as quickly as possible without having to go out and and buy a bunch of other metal pieces or parts for the bike or anything like that. I originally thought this frame was going to be made out of steel, but it's actually aluminum, so I needed to find some way to attach these steel pieces to the aluminum frame. If you guys remember my giant battery e-bike, well, when I cut up the seat to recreate the seat on that one, I had this piece that was the old seat tube, so I just put that on top, and then I welded two square tubing pieces onto that to extend it upwards. I thought about making these tubular uprights just straight up and down but I felt like it went with the flow of the frame a lot better like just visually it looked a lot better to go with that same angle that was coming up kind of like how a bicycle seat does and I also thought that it might give a little bit more support rearward where your butt is going to be which is where most of your weight is going to be sitting. Now that I have some height from the top of the seat post and also some width I actually need to make this even wider because it's going to then link up with the side rails that I'm going to be putting on that are going to be extending not only backwards out to hold on the cargo bins but forward as well to attach to the front of the bike. Speaking of the front of the bike let's go there now because I need to find a solution for attaching this steel subframe to the aluminum frame. I figured maybe bolting through both of the tubes is going to be a little bit stronger than just doing one of them so that's why this bracket is as long as it is. I need the steel brackets attached here so that I can have something to weld to to tie up to the rest of the subframe so let's just poke some holes in this aluminum. So far on this build, the only pieces of metal that I purchased are the L brackets, those long runners that are going to go on either side of the bike. But normally on a regular nice project, I would be buying hardware specific to the application that I needed. That's why I have so many left over. But now this project, I'm just trying to do with what I have, which thankfully I have a lot. So I just need to find something that is going to work. What I don't have is a bunch of super long bolts especially in a smaller diameter so this was the closest one that I could find and as you can see it is way too long so let me just trim that up and I actually need to trim it a little bit more but I'll take care of it it's not going to stick out that much when I'm done with it. If this were a proper project would I make both of these bolts exactly the same on top and bottom? Yes I would but I only had one of those bolts so I'm just working with what I have. It's part of what this project is. While I was editing this, I found myself thinking, I am getting way too comfortable with an angle grinder. Please do not do this. Keep all of your limbs and things that you care about away from the angle grinder while you're using it. It is very easy to turn a hot dog into a hamburger at record speed. This is still technically the seat post, even though it's not really a post anymore. It's more of like a bracket. And now that we have the front bracket that is steel and this rear mid seat post bracket that is now steel. Let me just clean this up so I can start welding and bridging the gap between the front and rear.
You might be thinking to yourself, wow, this thing looks real strange, real wacky, real bizarre, but just trust me, it's gonna look like a real bike at some point. This project posed a lot of challenges and problems that I needed to solve and that's one thing that you guys don't really see is how much thought and time goes into just figuring out how I'm going to do these things. And now I have to figure out how I want to attach these side rails to the front brackets. I was thinking I could just go directly parallel with the ground and then I was thinking maybe I could just have them angled down slightly. I didn't exactly know what I wanted to do. I felt like having them parallel was kind of nice looking but also having them angled downward just I don't know it just fit a little bit better so I was playing around with these angles here and if these bars look a bit anemic or not strong enough for you for what the purpose of this bike is I want to remind you that the front of the bike here isn't going to be bearing a ton of weight most of the weight is going to be at the seat post and rearwards If you guys were wondering how a seat was going to fit on this weird kind of subframe thing that I'm making, this is the beginnings of that. I'm going to be making my own seat. If there's one gripe I have about bicycles, it's that the seats are never that comfortable. Even the super plush, giant, super cruiser ones are still not as comfortable as motorcycle seats. So I wanted to go with a more motorcycle slash moped style seat because those are just more comfortable and since I'm making it my own I can make it as plush as I want it Fitting with the theme of turning trash into something more treasurable, I kid you not, I was on my way to go to the hardware store to buy more metal because I needed it, and I found this in the trash. And this is incredible because if you guys don't know, metal is extremely expensive right now compared to what it used to be. Those metal bars I used to buy, they were like four or five dollars. Now they're 18. 20 plus dollars just for one piece of metal. It is totally crazy. The e-bike gods must have smiled down upon me because I came into a ton of metal for nothing and I was very happy about that because I wanted to keep the price of this project down as much as possible. Another surprising thing that you guys will probably be shocked to hear is that yes right here I am making my own torque arms. I know, I know, and yes, it's true, Mr. I never put torque arms on anything is actually fabricating his own torque arms to put on his project. I'm not saying that big torque arms got to me. All I'm saying is you either die a hero or live long enough to become a villain. Now, having said that, and even though this bike frame is aluminum, and I would say 98 to 100% of the time, you're gonna wanna run torque arms if your bike frame is aluminum. Aluminum is a very soft metal, and it's going to want to strip your dropouts with all the of that torque. Steel frame, different story. I already have a whole video. You guys probably know the saga of Big TA. Even though this frame is aluminum, I probably still wouldn't run torque arms. And that's only because the motor kit I'm putting on this build is extremely gentle. The torque curve is very very slow to ramp up. I'm making these custom torque arms one mostly because it's another anchor point for the cargo subframe and also two it's a cargo bike and I want to make it a bit more robust and make things a little bit stronger. And three, if I ever do want to add more power or a more powerful motor to it, then I don't have to then fabricate dropouts again. There is one downside to getting free metal and that is it's probably not in a good condition to be welded. And as you can see, this is just pouring out 
tons of toxic paint smoke and it's not fun to breathe and this made welding and using these pieces a lot more challenging and yes I should have probably just stripped all the paint away but I try to do the best I can and still it just is not fun to weld with. The paint loves to catch on fire, it loves to smell absolutely terrible, and no matter how much of it you strip off, it still gets hot enough to where it wants to start smoking. The cargo bins are going to be mounted more rearward, so I wanted extra supports back here to counteract a lot of the weight when you're going to be filling them up with things that are heavy. I thought this design was kind of cool because now you have the rear steel dropouts which which are also the torque arms which are integrated into the entire subframe. So essentially this entire subframe is now a giant torque arm. Next I had to think about where and how I was going to mount a battery and I was just going to fabricate my own little rails coming off of the bottom and then joining up at the top but I actually found this piece that I didn't throw away from my old enduro frame. This was the old battery holder that went inside of the main compartment and it is actually almost perfectly wide enough to fit in this spot right here. This is why I save a lot of the pieces that, I mean, I've had this piece laying around for four or five years now and I just never knew what I was gonna use it for. And then it fit perfectly in that spot like a puzzle piece. Another good thing about a shopping cart is that it already has a kind of grid-like or lattice structure. And I thought what better way to make a rear kind of tie down or rack area than to use part of the grid. This is pretty much where I'm at at this point and it is way crazier than I ever thought this build was going to be. I thought I was just going to make something very hacky and something that didn't really have a lot of design elements or anything like that and it's actually coming out really cool and I was surprised at this point and kind of excited and this is where things got a little crazy because this project this build was never supposed to be like a significant project I was I thought I was gonna make it and be done with it in like a week or two but this thing has taken on a new form and has completely changed into something a lot more prominent. It's pretty much only tacked up at this point. Nothing is super fully welded out, but you can see some of the design elements I'm starting to insert. I have an integrated handle right there from the old seat post, and also I'm adding these braces to all the runners. If you notice, I also added smaller torque arms on my larger torque arms, almost like an exhibit meme torque armception going on here and I'm going to be hose clamping those to the main part of the frame so this area is going to be very robust. I know we haven't even gotten to the cargo parts of the cargo build but let me know what you guys think so far. Does it look ridiculous or are you seeing kind of where I'm going with this? Let me know in the comments. I'm really curious. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.